On the banking sector, what are like give us three solutions or three policies you'd like to see? I think uh, I'm totally convinced that uh, the policy framework in Indian banking is uh, converging. I think the capital inflow by the government of India, which was uh, somewhat uh, overdue, has now got uh, detail into every uh, bank. Right. That will help a little bit. Number two, uh, in my personal opinion, that uh, capital will help up to a point, but the major solution lies in risk management systems. Right, right. How do you get the risk management systems to really get uh, robust? Yes. And how to build the risk management architecture so that you don't have this whole thing repeat itself? Quite right, quite right, exactly. Number two, uh, my recommendation would be that uh, we must realize one thing that India is about segmentation. That all industry risk is about uh, how to analyze a single industry and see the risk. Because we are a very heterogeneous country. And cement may be different in different parts of the world, as may be steel and as may be many other industries. So we must understand the segmentation risk is another very important aspect of how we analyze risk management in the banking system. And I think the third thing which I, I would like to amplify, that uh, for banking to come back to a permanent cure, is uh, how you build your board architecture and you build your uh, management architecture. And that must be so empowered and accountable that even when you're there and after you're there, it must have traceability and must have trust in the decision making which is manifested in Indian banking. So I think these three simple uh, solutions. Yeah, I have I mean, a few more, but uh, no, I think well, for the time being. Okay, give us if you got one some more, we'll come back to it. But you've raised important issue in terms of risk management is the focus in India, yeah, and you don't not. want the whole thing to be repeated again. And somebody should act now to make sure that loans are given with proper assessment of the risk. Is that right? Uh, sorry, no, it can be done. That uh, risk assessment is uh, is uh, actually like a money doctor. You have to be a diagnostic, you have to be prescriptive, and you have to monitor. Monitoring also, yeah. The monitoring system is the most important system because you can uh, analyze the risk once and you can uh, take care of it uh, thereafter. But uh, the monitoring risk is the most important risk. And it has red flags. It must be able to manage it proactively. The point I'm trying to make is that risk management is an art and it must be manifested in every institution in our country. And banking, to me, is an amplification of risk management. One of the, I mean, you did say, is very different for different sectors, different parts of the country, and a lot of people have the, what I th hear is a misconception that farmer loans, farmers are a big risk, but other people say 90% of them pay back their loan. So is it, is it a myth that farmers never pay back? See, uh, on this subject, I, I'm not the technical expert, but all I can say is that if farmer loans are done well in a jurisdiction, yes. where the jurisdiction is predicated on a certain consumption economy, right. so whether it's a tea state or whether it's like a horticulture state, right. and the farmers are predicated, it's very safe lending. Okay. But if it's farmer lending, which is uh, parachuting, that can be high risk. So I think we have to be very selective and the banking credit programs can be structured accordingly. And how well is digitization of the entire banking process uh, progressing? I'm personally very convinced that uh, it's uh, had a vertical ta takeoff. You know why I say that is uh, it's on the public stack that we have today 95% representation on Nadhar. So India did not have a social security system so I think uh, with the back of this, with almost 95% registration on Aadhaar, I think we can build a social security system. We can build a KYC system. We can build an AML system. So I'm terribly convinced that this is a fantastic program which has got off onto its own feet. And the good thing is that it's frugal. Right. It's uh, frugally innovative. It's low cost because India needs very low cost innovation. So I'm uh, very deeply convinced that this is going to be a very successful social security program 
in course of time. It's been very successful in East Africa and many other countries. So, yeah, yeah. and India is very society that's technologically inclined. So it should be even more successful here. And no, it's really low cost. No, Prano, I 100% agree with you that this is the program that can do wonders. It can do wonders, uh, and the question is, how do you deliver that at a frugal cost? And I think the public stack in India has created that uh, Aadhaar, has created the beam systems, which are very frugal. So I think it will create a very uh, efficient delivery system with reasonable productivity. And on the back of that, if we maximize delivery systems, because very important to maximize delivery, then I think we can do wonders with it. We're talking about technology and the inclination towards technology. Uh, are you upgrading, are all banks upgrading their technology like using artificial intelligence? Is that, is that on the horizon? No, absolutely, Pranoy. Uh, AI and, uh, you know, uh, robotics and uh, you can, uh, AR and VR, we, we are into that. We have to create a virtual experience because uh, right now the whole experience in banking is changing. Banking is becoming a business of obsolescence. Interesting. So unless in you... In the sense that uh, the typical physical architecture has to go through a management change. So we must build digital systems and then transform them within two to, two to three years into what I like to believe are going to be very frugal innovation systems. That uh, whole banking is going to be accessed in India through digitalization. And I personally believe that the physical part of it is going to be relevant to senior communities who are going to see a nice brands sticking it out there. But the branch setup has to contract now. Got it. So there is a paradigm shift taking place in Indian banking. And are you taking a lot of care to ensure privacy and uh, anonymity and uh, uh, avoiding any big brother aspects in banking or in any other sector? Well, you are absolutely right that uh, in the sense that uh, security systems, cyber security included, are uh, paramount in Indian banking. So all the uh, security features, whether it's uh, driven by blockchain, whether it's driven by security uh, aspects, with the filters in place, I think Indian banking is in very well, very well conditioned. And the good thing is our cost structures are very reasonable. Blockchain is great. Are you introducing that? We have introduced that through uh, API systems uh, for uh, vendors and distributors. But we have not done that well enough today into retail systems. Uh, my second last question, what do you think of Bitcoin? I'm a little, uh, you know, uh, of a pessimist. Cautious. Uh, a little cautious. Uh, about uh, the future of uh, Bitcoins, but I personally believe that this is a shift which is going to force the rest of the world. So we may be on the back foot right now, so am I, but I think this is the shift which is going to make a big difference in the future. We'll have to live with it. When anything technical, a huge change comes in, everybody's skeptical, but then as you say, it's going to, it could be the future. I personally believe it's uh, the cautious future, it has to be filtered with risk management systems, security management system, but it's inevitable. It's in Bitcoins are inevitable. That's very all cryptocurrency. And uh, last question. You are an observer of the financial world in India. What would you like to see in the budget? I think in the budget, uh, we are looking at uh, naturally this uh, being very significant in terms of being able to uh, create more and more business creation. I think what we right. need is the economy to get on a, a strong spurt. I think the economy uh, has uh, been through uh, gradual uh, changes for second, third year, but we have to make changes in the economy which are going to be super you know, important. What do I mean by that? Then I think the corporate tax rate has to come down sharply. I was just going to say, uh, Trump has just brought down the biggest corporate tax reduction in the history of the United States. Is the world going to follow because the uh, United States is an important player in the world. So the impact of the Trump cut in corporation tax, is it going to affect, are we going to bring our tax down or do we have to? Now, Pranoy, I 100% agree with you that uh, we must bring down 
corporate tax rates because uh, we must get uh, private investment to crowd in. And I think that will happen uh, if we uh, make a big difference in taxation rates. And those taxation rates will actually catapult our Indian economy. The incrementality thereafter, we know that, will work, in my opinion, reasonably well. And I think uh, the U.S. is setting a standard, but India has to set an even better standard. And I think uh, the overall CAPEX cycle being driven by uh, public CAPEX, if you see, it's grown by 29% between April and November this year. So the public CAPEX is crowding in domestic CAPEX. Yeah, there's a crowding out and crowding in syndrome, yeah. So we need the crowding in to happen. Right. But more than that, we need permanence in uh, corporate taxation. And I think there's a message here in this budget, which is very important, that we must assume. That's a very good point, I hope. The finance minister is taking notes and listening to this. Thank you very much and congratulations on, the, on your success. Thank well you. Well done. Okay.